Hello and welcome to part two of the Save the Butterflies app tutorial using Thunkable. I am going to show you now how to get this fire to move around when you press the buttons down here that control it. So we're on a grid right now and so what that will look like angle wise is right here if the fire is in the middle and he moves zero degrees he's going to move in the direction of zero which is this way. So that would be our right arrow button is moving zero degrees. If we want him to move up it will be 90 degrees left will be 180 and down will be 270. So let's take a look over here. We're going to go into our blocks section now because we're going to code those buttons. So over here, button one is the button that goes up. So let's click on button one because we want to control it. And the top option here says when button one click, do something. Well, we want the image sprite to move, right? So let's get the image sprite and we're going to scroll till we see the green section. We want to set the image sprite speed first. Let's find speed. We're going to set that to 10 and I'm going to grab the, a math block to do that. There's an empty one all the way at the top. We can drag that over and that's going to be 10. So we'll set the speed to 10 and then we will also with the image sprite, click on image sprite again, go down here and we will set his heading in a certain direction. We will set him heading to 90, 90 degrees, right? Because we want him going up. And so we'll put in 90 here because remember in our little grid picture, 90 is going up. So we can leave that just like that. And you know what? I'm going to actually change my mind here. Instead of when button one is clicked, that means that when you click it and lift up right away, then you can have him move. But I want you to be able to hold down on that button. So let's go to button one and do uh, touch down. So while you're touching down on that button, it can move. So instead of having to tap it a hundred times to get the fire to move, you can just hold down on it. So let's do that. And then when button one is touch up, when the user lets go, we're going to turn the speed back to zero. So all we need to do is right click on this one right here and say duplicate, come back here and say zero. So that's button one. We can duplicate this for button two. Notice there's a red X here. That means our program won't work because we have conflicting button ones is two things telling button one what to do. So we have to make sure we change that to button two. Now what direction is button two going to be heading? Well, that's this button. So that's 180 degrees. The speed will be the same. And we also can duplicate this one. So when button two is touched up, speed will be zero. Let's duplicate again for button three and button four. I'm going to actually pause the video and let you guys catch up and I'll come back when all of these are done. Okay, so we should have when button one is touched down, it's heading in the 90 degree direction at 10, the speed of 10. Button two should be 180. Button three should be 270 and button four should be zero because going Oh, I have those backwards actually. Button four should be going to 270 because that's down and button three should be going to zero. We call this failing forward when you make a mistake and, you're, and you realize it and you move on and you say it's not a big deal. Okay, so I failed forward there and now um, we have all of this in here. We can go ahead and test the code. So what you can do is grab a tablet, an Android tablet and open the Thunkable app. You'll see something that says scan QR code. And then you go here to test and then Thunkable Live. And that will bring up a QR code. You can scan it, give it a few seconds. And then hopefully what will happen is as you press these buttons on your screen, the fire will move in the correct direction. If it's not, you'll need to fail forward and check out your block section and make sure you coded everything correctly. So I'll go ahead and pause the video. You can test it out and then we will come back and do more. Okay, so hopefully everything's working now and I'm going to show you a trick in your code section here to save some space. So if you right click on a section here, you can collapse the block. So I recommend going through and doing this with all of your sections of code and kind of keeping things in order because we're going to have a lot of code in here and it's a good idea to kind of keep things organized so that you can find it later if you think there's a problem with a certain section of code. So I'm going to collapse all of these. You guys can go ahead and do that for yours. And I'm, notice how I'm trying to keep them in order here. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on getting the, uh, the bushes or the brush and the butterflies on your canvas. So let's go back into uh, the designer tab 
and we're going to drag over six uh, bushes and we're going to kind of spread those around. They're not going to move at all. So you're going to just pick a spot to put the brush um, six different places. I have four now, five and six. And what you're going to do is for each of these, you're going to find a picture and I've already saved my picture, but you'll need to do an image search um, and find a, a something that looks like a, a bush or a brush or a tree or something like that. And you're going to put that as um, each of those six spots, those different image sprites. So I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do probably, um, tw this time I'm going to do 25 by 25. And I'll say okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my six bushes here. And then after that, I'm going to drag over six more image sprites and do six butterflies. Those are going to become butterflies. So image sprites two through seven, and we have a cheat sheet here for you. Two through seven need to be bushes and eight through 13 need to be butterflies. So let's go ahead and get those in there and then you can come back to the video. Okay, so I have all of my butterflies in here. I did make them a little smaller than the bushes because I want it to not be too hard for people to navigate around them. Um, so I did 15 by 15 for height and width. Now what we want to do is make these invisible when the game starts. So this is image sprite eight through 13. We're going to go into blocks. We don't want to see them when the game starts. So let's go to screen one. When screen one initializes is when the game starts. So we're going to go here when screen one initializes. We want image sprite eight, because that's our first butterfly, to be not visible and also not doing anything. So we're going to set image sprite enabled, which is whether it's doing something or not, to false. And that's in logic. And then I can duplicate and, oops, I did comment instead, remove comment. I'm going to duplicate and do set image sprite visible to false. Okay, now I need to duplicate that for all of them. So I'll duplicate this one and that's now going to be image sprite nine. Okay, image sprite nine enabled false and now image sprite nine visible false. Okay, you need to do that for 8 through 13. Okay, make sure you're keeping track of which image sprite is which. So it should be 8, 9, all the way down to 13. I'll pause and meet you back here in a second. Okay, so we have image sprite 8 through 13, both enabled and visible are false for them. That means that all of those butterflies, when we start the game, we won't see them and they won't be moving around. What we do want as well at the beginning of the game is a message to pop up with the instructions for the game. This is called a notifier. We're going to go into user interface and grab a notifier. It's invisible, so drag it anywhere on the screen and let go. You'll see that it showed up down here at the bottom. And what we want to do in blocks is bring over, go find the notifier, bring over the one that says uh, call notifier, show message dialog, the message, the title, and the button text. We're going to put that at the bottom of also what happens when we start the game. The message, we can grab a pink empty text box here and we'll leave that blank for now. And we're going to duplicate that and put it in title as well and button text. Button text is the easy one. That's going to say like start game or OK or um, whatever you want. I'm going to say um, play. And the title is like what happened, what's at the top of the notifier. So I'm going to say like start game or save the butterflies. Maybe I'm going to say save the butterflies. You can change your mind. You can do whatever you want. And then the message is going to be the instructions for the game. So for me, I, I have this cheat sheet here. I'm going to go ahead and take this content and copy it. You can type it in or type it somewhere else, copy it and paste it in this little box. I know it's long and you can arrow through if you want to look for errors. Um, but now what you have is a message that pops up at the beginning of the game saying, this is what you're supposed to do. Burn back the brush so the lupin can grow. Butterflies don't die. Um, and then when they press the play button, they're in the game and things are going to start happening. So we're going to code that in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, collapse this block because we're done with that. And now we have a, a block that talks about what happens when we start the game and we have all the blocks that will control the buttons. What we need to do next is change these when they're hit by the fire to change from brush to lupin or the blue wildflower.